This week on TGC News, a place to rent optics, a foregrip for people that love foregrips, and some more rapid fire news. Keltec offers some of the most interesting and innovative firearms in recent memory. Whether you're into bullpup rifles like the RDB or RFB, or maybe the KSG bullpup shotgun in short or gigantic configuration, or maybe you just want to plink around with some pistol caliber stuff like the Sub 2000 or PF9. They make something affordable for everyone. To learn more, check out KeltechWeapons.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, gun news you actually care about. My name is John Patton. If you're watching this and you aren't subscribed, make sure you hit that button and change your situation. Now, how about some news? I think one of the most common frustrations in the gun industry is the prices of certain accessories. Why is that so expensive is a phrase that gets tossed around a lot whether it's a suppressor or even an optic. You spend several hundred or maybe several thousand on a rifle, and then you have to spend another big chunk on an optic. That right there can suck a lot. And that is exactly why some of the more affordable brands have had such massive success in recent years. Not only that, but let's say you spent a bunch of money on an optic and you end up not liking it. You're never gonna get your money back out of it if you sell it. Well. Those issues of affordability and selection, et cetera, et cetera, are quite possibly, possibly covered by a new company called Vulcan Circle. The basic premise of this company is that you pay a monthly fee and you get to rent their optics. Sounds like a really neat idea if you ask me. Let's break down how it works. There are three levels at which you can join. The Legionary, which is priced at 45 bucks a month for a six month period, gets you access to the likes of a Trijicon ACOG, Aimpoint T2, Trijicon RMR, and Vortex PST Gen 2. And at that price, you get to select two different optics to keep for three months each for a total of a six month term. The Centurion priced at 90 bucks a month is the next step up. And with that, you start getting into fancier stuff like the Night Force NXS and Elkan Spectre. And the top level is called the Tribune priced at $180 a month. And that gets you access to all of the top stuff like Kalis and Swarovski and whatnot. What seems to be a little weird is that it doesn't seem like if you lock in at the top, you get access to all of the lower tier items. I could be wrong, but their website didn't seem to indicate that, which in my opinion would suck. If you pay 180 bucks a month, you should be able to choose any of that stuff, right? So once you decide what tier you want, you have to apply by giving them some basic info about yourself and then selecting your plan. It really doesn't seem too complicated. They also have a rewards program so that you can get some extra gear if you use the service enough. Honestly, this seems like a really, really good idea for a lot of people. If you spend 270 bucks at the lowest tier or 1,080 at the top tier, you could play with a couple different optics that are well above that pricing. The only issue is that you don't get to keep them, so you have to decide whether or not that monthly fee is justifiable for your needs. What do you guys think of a service like this? Is this the kind of thing you've been waiting for your whole life so you can play with all the cool kid optics, or is the price just way too much for what you want to do? Sound off in the comments and let's hear your thoughts. Up next this week, we have a new AR-15 accessory that promises to be the be-all, end-all of foregrips. Let's all pause for a collective eye roll. Here we go. Ugh. It seems like the industry is like chasing the dragon when it comes to foregrips. There are a lot of copies and borrowed concepts across the board. Some tiny and minimalist like the Zero Bravo, or then you have some more complex one like the Fist Grip from Riker, and then you have simple ones like my favorite, the Grip Stop, or even the classic AFG from Magpul. There is certainly no lack of options, but there is a new one on board. It's called the Wasp, and it's made by a company called FXD, or Force Multiplied by Design. Wasp actually stands for Weapons Ambidextrous Stabilization Platform. That is a mouthful. Their promo video does a really good job of churching it up and making it sound way more technical than it is. But in reality, it's an angled grip with an adjustable rest for your index finger and optional 
gas pedals for your thumbs on the sides. It also has a chamber on the back for your pressure pad so you can activate your electronics. The idea doesn't seem bad, but I'm not sure what problems it's actually solving. I'm not going to argue about body mechanics and how you're supposed to be holding your rifle because I'm not that guy, but I will say the grip position they are claiming is so magical for controlling the gun is about a quarter of a wrist turn away from just grabbing the damn rail. It's like here, 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 here. It's all the same. Come on. Oh, come on! Maybe I'm way off base and one of you firearms instructors out there can correct me, but this seems like a bit of a solution looking for a problem. Well, that and the fact that it appears to be a ripoff of the Fab Defense PTK. And the final, I'm not gonna buy that for me, is the price. The MSRP on this is 108 bucks. It's on sale a little cheaper right now. MSRP is $108. With all of the options on the market, most well under 100 bucks, there's just no reason to spend that much freaking money on a foregrip. But maybe I'm wrong here. Do you guys think those adjustable gas pedals or index finger rests are worth all that money? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see what you think. It's time again for some rapid fire news, starting with a little Brownells action. They recently announced that they were going to be on the receiving end of some authentic HK416 and 417 parts kits, which apparently are super rare here in the States. They include everything except a lower receiver, barrel, and bolt. They actually went on sale on August 31st, which was a few days ago, with super limited quantities, and as of right now, the only thing left is 417 kits, and they are not cheap just shy of 3,500 bucks for an incomplete rifle. Boys and girls, if you're an HK fanboy, or maybe you're way into military clones, this is a cool thing. If you're not, then holy crap, that's expensive. <laughs> Next up, Polymer 80 has announced a new hybrid option for those that like a full-size slide and a compact grip. We've seen a lot of people that are into this concept lately, and this just further reinforces it. The new frame will be called the PF940CL. <laughs> they will be offered as a clean slate for stippling or pre-textured, and will fit any of the mid-sized cartridges like 940 and 357 SIG. They are expected to start shipping within the next month or two, and I'm estimating pricing on those will fall around 160 bucks just like all their other options. And rounding us out is a new AR tool from Midwest Industries. It's called the Upper Receiver Rod, and it seems like a direct competitor for the Geisley Reaction Rod. This one features four flats on the rear, a block on the top to fit into the gas tube channel, and of course, lugs on the front to slide into the barrel extension. The price on that starts at 95 bucks. Tactical Baby Gear offers some of the coolest diaper bags, baby carriers, and day packs for the mom and dad that love freedom. Whether it's the Deuce 2.0 diaper bag combo with the bottle and dump pouches, the Day Pack 3.0, or maybe just the Tactical Teddy, you are bound to find something that works for you and your tactical baby. Also available are the new bulletproof panels that are level 3A Kevlar soft panels that fit inside either the backpack or diaper bag. To get squared away and get 10% off your order, use the code TGC10 at tacticalbabygear.com. It's time for some more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over social media. And because you guys blew up our Instagram last week, I'll be answering more of your questions from there. First, Woody Armin 359 says, can you explain in layman's terms Q's new 8.6 Creedmoor? Yes, I can. My understanding is that it's basically a giant 300 blackout for the AR-10 slash 308 based platforms. I personally love the idea of a big old 338 bullet shooting subsonic, but we will have to wait and see how it performs. Side note, Kit Badger on YouTube has a video explaining everything about that round, and he is one of the few guys that has actually seen it in person. I will link that in the description for you to watch. Jam and Shell says, what do you recommend for new concealed carriers for comfortable clothes and holsters? There are a ton of options out there. 
I'm a believer that you shouldn't really have to change your wardrobe to carry, maybe just slightly adjust things. One of the most important things is to get yourself a good gun belt. My top two choices are the Blue Alpha Gear Hybrid or the Savoie Leather Double Thick. And when it comes to holsters, there are so many. For a long time, I was carrying a Viper Holsters Hybrid, but since I've recently switched to carrying the VP9, I'm currently testing an inside the waistband holster from a company called Full Metal Beard Company. The reality is you will likely go through a bunch of different holsters and other things before you find the perfect setup for you. And our question of the week and winner of a Tactical Walls hat and America Grip Toolkit, Austin Lathan says, because of Space Force, would a gun actually fire in space? And if so, would it cycle? I suspect it would shoot and cycle just fine. If I'm not mistaken, gunpowder does not actually need outside oxygen to burn. It has oxidizers contained within it. However, the gun may actually overrun itself run too fast, which would cause a malfunction because there is no gravity, but being that that is impossible for me to test currently, it'll just be a guess. Austin, send me a message to get your prizes. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What is the number one, number one gun-related product that you don't own yet? Something you want, but don't have. Drop your answer in the comments, and hey, if you want to ask a friendly fire question, send it to me on any of our many social media outlets. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, if you disliked it, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have a new Amazon affiliate store, as well as a link to purchase cool shirts just like this one. Yeah, buy a shirt. <laughs> and of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, Thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. This week on... I gotta give you space. I gotta give you space. Gotta give you space. <laughs> Crying like a liberal. Trump's in office. <laughs> I'm so mad about it. WASP actually stands for weapons, ambidextrous, stable... But in reality, it's an angled... I wonder if that guy's gonna be upset that I dropped his stuff. <laughs> The shirts worn in today's video on The Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.